good morning and welcome to our devotions for today Thursday I trust you had a peaceful night and you're all set for this new day we give thanks to Almighty God for his many blessings to us as we approach this new day and we take this time this morning to come away as we prepare ourselves for the day and see what God is saying to us and how we can in some way allow God's presence to be with us to minister to us and so as usual I want to invite you to find a comfortable space where you won't be disturbed and where you can allow yourself to just relax in the presence of the Savior in the presence of the Father the presence of the Holy Spirit to be able to breathe deeply and to be aware to be conscious of our breath to be conscious of that life-giving force and to bring our attention into our hearts and to understand what it means to allow God to be real in our lives as we begin this day we bring into our hearts the wondrous light of Christ the light which radiates out a light that blesses all A light that shows no partiality. This is the beginning of a new day. And we oftentimes reminded not to drag the weights of yesterday into today, for today will have its own weights. So as we breathe out, we breathe out our concerns about yesterday. And then you breathe in the freshness of today. With all of its uncertainties, with all of its hopes, expectations. And I just want to rest in that space. Giving thanks to Almighty God for life. For health. And if there are any challenges for our health, to give God thanks for whatever He is doing with us through these challenges. And to recognize that we are oftentimes reminded that we don't experience more than we can bear. And at times we may think we are not able. But by God's grace we are able. So take these moments and create that sense of light and love within your heart. And just allow that light and love to expand beyond your body. Expand beyond the room in which you are sitting or lying. To expand beyond your space. And to fill the whole world with light and love in the midst of all that's going on. Bring your peace here so that we may share in your peace so that together we may allow that peace which passes all understanding to keep our hearts
And so we envisage places where we know there's need for love and light. And we send our love and our light into those places in our world. Praying that it will make a difference. That others will come to know. Listening to you this day, Father, I acknowledge your love for us. And I give thanks that you continue to love us into being. Be with each of us this day and help us to know you in new ways. Ways that to this moment have not been revealed. Help us to know you as Jesus knows you. May this devotion be an open invitation to you to come and take the place of honor in our lives. A place to which only you have right full claim. May we create for you joy in your creation. In Christ we pray. Amen. Reading our text today from John chapter 5 verse 30 to 42. Jesus says, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf. And I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's, the works that the Father has given me to complete. The very works that I am doing testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you, because you do not believe him whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that testify on my behalf. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings. But I know that you do not have the love of God in you. Here ends the reading.
Jesus tells those who were listening to him that he knows one thing for sure and that is that they do not have the love of God in them. This is a, a serious indictment really that Jesus offers in this passage to not have the love of God. One wonders what does it look like when one has the love of God? What did Jesus not see? It's very interesting when we are dealing with the spiritual life that persons are able to make statements that you wonder how how would they know this? How how did they arrive at this? It's like Paul in Ephesus where he encounters a group of Christians and he he asks them a peculiar question. He asks them if they received the Holy Spirit when first they believed. And they said, no, what's that? And he asked, whose baptism did you have? And they said, John's. And so Paul takes them and baptizes them again. And he lays his hands on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. What is it that Paul didn't see in them? that caused them to ask that particular question. There are persons in our lives that might just walk up to us and say something profound about us and we wonder, how did they know that? Whenever we have these kinds of encounters, we must realize that there's a lot more to this journey than we know. We have being schooled only on what is hard facts, what we can put into a test tube and be objective about. But that limits us amazingly. It limits us in amazing ways because it shuts us off from so much and it reduces us to very little more than the animals. Even though we may take our intellect and think that it is phenomenal, the fact is that it, it pales in relation to our spiritual potential. So today, as we share in this devotion, I would like to again encourage us all to be very aware that there's a vastness about us that sometimes not even the church teaches because the te church teaches us a lot about Jesus and they don't teach us what Jesus really says and how Jesus constantly encouraged his followers to realize that there's a lot more than they think. We must do more than be content with knowing the stories. We must be willing to engage the stories and create new stories. New stories of faith experience, new stories of the power of God working in the people of this day, of this time. And recognize that yes, there are prophets around us, there are seers. They are individuals who are gifted with God's grace. And they're not all in our churches. They're not all in our faith tradition. They're scattered all across the earth. And they're there. And when we go seeking, we find them. When we go asking, we discover them. And we can benefit from them. But if we do not ask, or we do not seek, then we do not get answers and we don't find. But when we ask, God gifts us with his presence through others. When we seek, God shows up in our world. 
when we knock doors are open that we didn't even know existed so at times we knock in faith believing there's a door believing that there's something beyond that door Jesus tell the guys you do not have the love of God sometimes this is so true Sometimes we discover in ourselves and in others that we don't really have the love of God. We don't really know what that is. We don't really experience it. But it is there, it is real, it is true. And it's, it's a gift. And the ability to perceive it in others is also a gift. Don't be small. Don't pretend. But come into your authentic self. And how do you do that? We do that by spending time alone with God. By asking God for guidance. By asking God to show us to lead us to places where we may discover, to bring books to us, to bring persons to us who can aid us and assist, help and assist us in this great work. Don't just sit back waiting for it to come to you. Know that it's there, it's coming, it's, it's ready, but you must do something. You must contribute. You must be willing to be open to receive. You must show up. And at times, in order for you to fully experience, you will find that there's work that you need to do in preparation. It's in a sense like that message that Jesus offers about putting new wine into old wine skins. Because when you do that, the wine skins burst. So oftentimes what is required is for us to prepare ourselves as new wineskins to receive that which is coming. Because the one that is, the Almighty, is not going to put new wine into an old wineskin knowing that it will burst. But he will help us to create new containers, new wineskins. And oftentimes the, the challenges that we go through, the turmoil and the tribulation, and it feels like turmoil, it feels like tribulation, it feels like the end of the world. But really all it is about is putting aside the old wine skin and forging a new wine skin in its place. And yes, admittedly, that can be painful. But he who endures to the end, the same will be saved. If we can suffer that temporary discomfort, it puts us in a place for eternal joy. So yeah, we do need to change the wineskin. We do need to prepare our containers. So let's allow it. Let's ask for help and guidance. Because we don't want Jesus saying to us, you do not have the love of God. We want to bear witness that we have the love of God. But we need the kind of container that could contain such powerful gifts. So today as we come into this wonderful space and we again realize that we are alive and we are in this world and that life is going on, pay attention to you. Pay attention to your needs, to what you want. Look and see where you are and what you need 
to bring to fruition the fullness of yourself. What do you need? What do you need to help you to build the container? Ask for help. Ask for guidance. Pray. Meditate. Be alone with God. Go out into nature. Walk alone. In safe places, obviously. But walk alone. And spend time encountering God. We live too much in jungles, in concrete jungles, and we don't engage enough in nature in order that we may be lost in that wonder, love and praise and be transformed by the presence of life around us and know ourselves as life and not as cogs on the wheel working. Our task is to have the love of God, but we must have some place to put it where it will not spill or be lost. May God grant us his assistance and grace in this respect. Oh, oh, oh.